What's going on everybody? I wanted to make a real quick tutorial about how to rebuild an AccuSump and today we're going to use my old three quart AccuSump. Now you'd want to rebuild this if A it's not holding pressure so actually when you put these in the car you kind of pressurize them to like 9 or 11 pounds or something uh, and you know if that bleeds off you'll have to rebuild it. B if you've blown your motor. If you have metal running through your motor and in your oil it's going to get in the AccuSump too which is why I'm rebuilding it today. And Three, I want to show you how to do this is because if you go to AccuSump's website or Canton's website, they will rebuild it for you. It's $60, you send it to them, they send it back, rebuilt. I don't want to do that, I don't want to wait for it, I don't want to pay what I only can assume is an outrageous amount for postage, I don't want to risk it getting damaged in, in post, and I don't want to wait. So I'm going to do it myself. Now I got very lucky, I had a friend who uh, asked Canton for a rebuild kit, which is just four O-rings and uh, they actually sent it to him. So normally they wouldn't send you a rebuild kit, but for whatever reason they sent him a rebuild kit. He didn't end up using it. Gave me, he gave it to me, and now I'm gonna use it on mine and show you guys how to do it. So let me show you how I got this uh, working here. So if you look at the end tanks of this device, there's four, I think these are 5 16 holes. They're bigger than quarter inch and they're smaller than 3 8 inch, so I think that's 5 16 And that's how we have to turn this to get these out. You don't want to clamp this because actually it's it's quite thin. So I used the brackets that it came with. I bolted them to a piece of wood and I clamped the piece of wood to my workbench there so that basically this isn't going to get damaged or rotate or move and it made it much easier to take things like the pressure relief valve, the AN fitting, the gauge and the uh, fill it's like a tire fill thing in this one. And that made it much easier to actually like work on it. So, so after I did that, I took some 3 8 rod and just ground it down a little bit on my bench grinder. So it would fit in those four holes. And actually I only used two holes. And uh, so I took two pieces of rod, ground them down like this until they fit in the hole. So once I made two of those rods and uh, ground them down until they fit in the holes, I put them in the holes just kind of like this. You can see they fit pretty tight, got a lot of engagement. Just make sure that if you do do this, they're pretty well in there. And then all I did was take a very long screwdriver, put it between them, and it started to loosen. So this side I've already loosened. I already knew this worked. I haven't done the other side yet. Uh, so when you guys see me break that one open, that'll be the first time. But this one I already knew was loose. So when we take this out, this is what the end cap looks like. This is the O-ring we want to replace. And we want to kind of clean it up overall. You can maybe see on camera there is actually some sparkly stuff in there. So there probably is metal in here. But I wanted to clean this up. I want to get it sold. And uh, this is a good way to do it. So I didn't cut these rods down, but I probably will if I keep doing this. Let's see if we can break this one open just as easily as the other one. I just put a screwdriver between them. I want to get pretty close to the cap so you don't bend anything. Maybe hold them here. And let's see. Well, this side's quite a bit diff more difficult than the other side. Of course, I was able to break it open off camera. I, what I did, so this was kind of moving in the clamp when I tried it last time. This was just a little bit tighter than that side. So I put this cap back in. And I clamped this down real tight and I loosened this clamp up a little bit and that's how I broke it free. So it did come free. It is regular standard thread. I was actually wondering if maybe it was left hand thread or something like that. But oh, we got some oil coming out. So now I can kind of twist this thing off pretty easily. I just got this clamp in the way here. And inside this cylinder, there's a piston. What you do with these is you pressurize one side of the piston and the other side is pressurized by your engine oil pressure. And if you lose engine oil pressure, the, the side of the piston that you pressurized pumps oil into the engine so that you don't blow it up. Pretty cool. And it's coming out. So both sides is a regular thread. This side was quite tight compared to the other side. 
I can't do it like that yet. And that she comes. Whoa, this is the engine side cap. That's all metal and, um, well, mostly metal. So there's four major parts to this Canton AccuSump. I guess five if you include the brackets. There's the engine side end cap, the cylinder side end cap, probably exactly the same, honestly. No, different, different size holes in the middles. Then there's the cylinder itself, this big blue thing, which is what we were really trying not to damage by doing all this. And inside there is a piston. So this piston goes up and down, and I'm just gonna push it out the other side. Oh, I'm gonna ruin my watch while I'm at it. Oh man, my arm's just a little too thick to reach all the way through. I'm just trying to push it. Oh, there we go, I got it. Wow. And we should note which way this goes. So on this video, the I guess this is the plunger side, the shallow side or the walled out side. That goes towards the end of the AccuSump label. And that's the piston. We have two O-rings on there. So all this does is slide back and forth through here, depending on which side has more pressure, engine side or pressurized side. Pressurized side basically always has like nine or 10 PSI in it because that's what you set it at. Engine side changes between, well, depending on what engine you have, but whatever your oil pressure is. So our goal is to clean each of those components up get them nice and free of any oil, grime, dirt, or metal from my engine, and uh, replace all the O-rings, and then put it all back together. Pretty, pretty simple, really. So I'm actually gonna measure the thickness and diameter of all those O-rings, so that if I need to do this in the future, I can actually just pick those up locally or order them from McMaster Car or something like that, uh, and do this again at my house. Okay, so I wrote down uh, what I measured, both of them were four inch diameter, slightly different thicknesses, and uh, I just wrote down, uh, I actually don't know how O-rings are specs, so I just wrote down the thickness on the caliper in uh, fractional, decimal, and uh, millimeters. So um, hopefully this helps somebody, and uh, they're just black O-rings. These are directly from Canton, and uh, they work with two and three sump, three quart AccuSumps. And what it looks like is the thinner O-rings go on the caps and the thicker O-rings, the thicker O-rings go on the pistons. So I'm gonna go ahead and take all these O-rings off. I'm gonna keep these in case uh, I lose this piece of paper and this video gets deleted and I can never find these measurements again. I'm gonna keep them, uh, the old O-rings, just zip tie them together, put them somewhere in the toolbox. So if anything like that happens, I can go get them again. Now we just got to clean up all these pieces with some, uh, I'd probably use alcohol and mineral spirits instead of brake clean since I think this is anodized so brake cleaner should be okay but I don't really want to risk it on the inside so I'll probably use mineral spirits or something less uh, corrosive than brake cleaner on it. Okay I got all the pieces cleaned up I just wiped them out with a microfiber towel. Don't use those red towels that you get from the auto parts store because they leave little red like lint everywhere so never use those on any engine components but Got everything pretty clean. Everything looks like it's in good shape. Piston doesn't really have any marks on it or anything. When we took the AccuSump out of the car, you know, the piston should have moved all the way down to the bottom and pushed all that grime and oil and metal all the way down to one side. So it looks pretty good in here too. So I think I got pretty lucky. This was pretty easily rebuildable. I'm going to go ahead and put the O-rings on, clean up a little bit because there's like oil everywhere, and um, put the piston back in, put the caps back on, get them tight, and then this thing will be rebuilt. Then we just need to get some thread tape, tape the fittings back on, tape the pressure release and the pressure fill on, and the gauge on, and we're good to go. I'm going to use some new engine oil to lube up those O-rings before just shoving that piston in and screwing those on so nothing, get pinched, nothing gets pinched or anything. So I figure what better 
to use in engine oil. That's what goes in it. the air fill on the air gauge side so that's what cap this is mm, pretty easy to cross thread this there we go be careful of that that's right where the O-ring engages right there. We'll tighten that back in the same way we took it off. Although you might be able to do it by hand if you're really strong. Not me though. Oh, I messed it up. It's supposed to be the air gauge side. I put the other side on. So now I gotta take this off. Not to worry. We're back in the clear. I'm just lubing up the O-rings so they're easier to slide in there. Don't want to make sure there's no oil kind of on the cylinder side, um, on the air side of the cylinder, because the oil will displace the air. I just want to make sure everything is cleaned up real nice. And there's just oil on the O-ring. I don't know if it's easier to cross thread if you put the wrong side in or not, but. Now if y'all look down in there, this is the engine side. You can see the piston. This one I already lubed up because I put it on the wrong side. So we're just gonna check the threads again, make sure there's nothing in them. And no oil on the inside here. And we're good to go. So never clamp this into these without these caps on, at least not tight, because you'll crush this cylinder. So I'm going to clamp one side tight, tighten the other side, loosen the side I want to tighten, and then tighten the last side, and that's how I'm going to do this, same way we took it off. So what we're going to do is I'm going to try to tighten this side first by putting this one down snugly and tightening that one, then I'm going to tighten this side by loosening this and then snugging it up and tightening this one completely. Same way we took it off. Although I wish I had a better solution with the clamp and these. I could have cut these down. That would have been nice. And turn it more than like a quarter turn at a time, but whatever. That's pretty snug. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Tighten this one up. Snug up that one. Do the other side. And then I'll tighten them both down and really crank on them with the screwdriver again. And there you have it, all tightened up. Worked pretty well. As soon as you tighten these clamps though, you are not moving this. So whatever side you're tightening has to be loose. And then I kind of snugged it up as I went to try to get this as tight as possible. But I didn't crank on it. I mean, certainly don't go bend in your screwdriver or anything. Same with this set, I just did opposite. So now I just have to uh, put the fittings back in here. They're all in this little uh, tray here. That's the air gauge. I got the uh, and adapter, pressure relief valve, and the little, um, I don't know, it's like a tire valve or whatever to fill the air. I'm going to take the tape off those, wipe them down, put new tape on, thread them into here. I think you guys can probably do that and this. And I told you guys this would be a quick tutorial. I'm a man of my word. The video is over. Hopefully this helps you do your Canton AccuSump or Moroso oil accumulator, I think they call it, by yourself on your own. Good luck. Maybe this will save you having to wait a couple weeks on postage. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time.